we're no strangers to love, you know the rules and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of, you wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just wanna tell you how I'm feeling. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. Hi there Gamers Bay on YouTube. Happy April Fool's Day. You so totally got Rick rolled. Hello everybody. My name is Michael Haney. I'm the creator of Chloe and the Professor. And we were supposed to do a episode about gaming and quantum computing, but today I thought I would do a behind-the-scenes look into what it takes to create a Chloe and the Professor episode. Now, the first part, there's nothing much really to show. In the first half, takes about two to three days of research for certain topics. If I don't know something, I'll look it up. I will look it up on Wikipedia. I'll do a lot of watching of YouTube videos. I'll read blogs, different things, and then I will go in and start creating the uh, the, the episode in Plotagon. And Plotagon is an animation software. It's similar to Go Anime and Normal, which is formerly called Extra Normal. The difference between Plotagon and Normal and GoAnimate is that it's free. Normal and GoAnimate are like $50 a month to use them. And plus, you have to buy certain assets and, and things, so it can get a little expensive. Another difference is that it, it's very limited. With GoAnimate and Normal, your characters can walk around the scene, you can have transitions between scenes, you can use your own uh, artwork, you can use your own um, sound effects, and you can record your own dialogue. You can do that with Plotagon, with a caveat. GoAnimate and Normal will lip sync lip movements of the characters to your recorded dialogue. Plotagon doesn't. Your character's lips don't move at all in Plotagon. It looks weird. I've seen Plotagon videos with uh, recorded dialogue and the character's lips aren't moving, but their characters are moving around based on um, emotes that you can set up. Now, the way you create a, um, create a plot, as they call it in Plotagon, or a video, is you create a scene, you put your characters in a spot, where you want them choose which ones you want and you put them in a spot and they stay there the entire time until you change the scene until you create a new scene they can't move around and then you uh, either type out your dialogue or you record it and as I said there's no lip syncing with the dialogue in Plotagon let me show you what this looks like and this part actually takes quite a while to do. It can take a whole day and a half. Actually writing the scenes is not the hardest part. It's getting it all to work properly. And these are all the ones I've created so far for Chloe and the Professor. And let's create a new plot. Right, here we are. We have a blank plot, draft one. You have a preview section, and this is where you add elements. Let's create a scene. Let's do the, you may have seen this before, the storyteller desk. This is, this is a uh, scene that only takes one character at a time. And let's put Chloe in here. And then you choose desk. Right? That's where she sits. Now, Chloe, if you're wondering, the inspiration I got for Chloe came from Chloe from uh, Fate Clyde, Prisma, Ilia, or, no. God. Anime names, anime names are so darn long these days. Fate Collide, Prisma, Ilia, Liner, no, Line. well, look up Fate Collide. And I got the idea for her from Chloe. 
in the anime. This is her right here. Her penchant for um, for Lolita Goth I got from Karumi from Data Live. I am an I'm an anime fan, of course. I write fan fiction, mostly Ranma half related stuff. Although I've been branching out into Naruto recently. Um, more serious adult sort of stuff, not smut, but adult situations, very serious stuff, but digressing. Back to Plotagon. After all the research and everything, and getting creating the episode, we get back to the scene, we can add music. And there's different types. Let's, uh, for this, uh, anticipating. You've heard this one before. And you can do actions, but there's no other characters around. I am not entirely certain how that would work with just one character. Never tried that before. But you add the music, and then you do dialogue. Now you select your character. You select an emotion. Let's do, um, let's do anger. And it has some default dialogue. My dialogue here. All right. And that's basically it. You do this for the entire episode, changing the uh, emotes a little bit. Right, dialogue here. You know, and that's about it. That's as simple as that. The part that takes the longest time, and that is dealing with quirks in text to speech. And this is true for just about every text-to-speech program. It's true for JAWS, which is a text-to-speech program for, which is a screen reader for um, the blind to use their computers. Uh, it is true of um, the text-to-speech features built into Windows, built into Mac OS. Really high-end text-to-speech programs. Some of them don't have it, but most do. It's a common problem. How they process text, how they process um, words is instead of doing it as a sentence like we do in our heads, they do it word for word. And what happens is, is if you have certain words in certain combinations, it will sound like certain words are slurred or mispronounced. They'll, they'll have an improper sound when it speaks of certain words in certain, in certain um, combinations. And it's a common frustrating problem with text-to-speech programs. To get around this, you have to put in punctuation in places where you normally wouldn't have it. Right. Dialogue here. Like, like that. And it breaks up the sentence. It... it causes them to pause where you normally wouldn't hear a pause and there is a um, right, subtitle feature here. they can't really use that because of the all the weird punctuation I have to put in to some of the sentences in order to get the text to speech to, to talk right and also a lot of words like let me add another dialogue here add Chloe happy Okay. Fanboys like Xbox Live. Okay, now you would think she would say fanboys like Xbox Live. Listen to what she says. Fanboys like Xbox Live. Okay, she does it correctly this time. <sighs> Alright. Normally she d does Xbox Live. Let's see if I can get her to say Xbox Live. Because normally I have to pronounce live. I have to I have to spell live phonetically. 
And this is another thing of text-to-speech. Let's see if she will say it correctly here. Say it incorrectly. Xbox Live. Okay. She's saying it correctly there. You know what? I've been wanting to demonstrate this for you for this, and now it's doing it correctly. <sighs> Figures. But, as I was saying... Sometimes it doesn't pronounce words correctly, and I have to spell them phonetically for it to say it correctly. And uh, it usually takes me all day to set this up, to write the episode here, make sure all the scenes come out correctly, make sure that I'm able to convey what I'm wanting to convey in the episode, and then upload it when you share I'm not going to do it here but when you share it will play through the entire episode rendering it to a video and then it will upload it to the Plotagon servers which you can see some videos here and it will upload them and then the Plotagon server if you if you um, put in the settings for your account your uh, code for uploading directly to YouTube. Every every YouTuber uh, gets a special code. You don't have to use your username and password. You just put this. Um, it's a string of letters and numbers. You put it in. You use it with Open Broadcaster also, which is what I'm using to record this. And it will. And it know it tells YouTube. Okay, this is for your account. Let's put this in your account. It'll upload the video, and then YouTube will start converting it over to their format. And that's how this works. Once that is done, I will then go to YouTube, and I will use their video editor, and I will splice in the intro and um, the video. This, what I just created here, and the outro. It will take... Uh, depending on the load on YouTube servers, it can take between 15 and 20 minutes to process the video. And then on Fridays, I post it on um, Gamers Bay exclusively. And then I make it public on Sundays for the rest of the internet on YouTube. That's how I make a episode of Chlorine the Professor. It is a process that takes about four to five days, which is why I stop doing it twice a week. Because it takes a lot of time. The research part is the longest one, and then there's a lot of work in getting the text-to-speech in this to work correctly. Depending on what the um, dialogue is, I have to go through and listen to each line to make sure it says it correctly, put in the pun punctuation where there is a problem to make it pause so that it will tell you the next word correctly, phonetically spell words if I can to get it to spell to get it to spell them correctly. It never did spell X it never did pronounce Xbox Live properly before, and it finally did today. But that's what it takes to make an episode. Now, why did I make the show? There's tons of videos out there with reviews and people talking about the gaming industry, but no one's ever really made a show that uses video games and the love of video games as a springboard to talk about other things, to talk about other important subjects. Spirituality, politics, science, you know, the gambit. No one's ever done this before. And I wanted to do it. Now, there's other uh, YouTube channels out there that talk about some of the same things I do. Uh, there is Rich from Review Tech USA, and there's Jim Sterling, who are both just, they're both brutal on the gaming industry when it comes to the crap they do especially electronic arts some of the stuff that they try to pull on us they are absolutely unapologetic 
Um, they're also very anti-politically correct, which I'm also very anti-politically correct. I am... I am against social justice warriors. I think they are extremists. I think they are bad for all of us. I agree with I agree with the idea that women need equality. However, I do not agree with their methods. I do not agree with them using, you know, using extremist methods to get their um, message across. You don't use these kind of methods and then expect people to take your views seriously. And so I don't, I do not support them. I do not support them. And that is what this show is about. This show is about teaching people without talking down to them using plain English, trying to explain things that everyone can understand without being patronizing and without sugarcoating it. And using, using gaming as a springboard to talk about important subjects. That is why I made this show. Now coming up in April, I'll be doing a show called Q&A with Mike. And I'll be doing it here on camera, just like this. And I am extending the um, deadline from April 3rd to April uh, 9th for submitting questions. So I'd like everyone in Gamers Bay and everyone in YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube on Sunday, I'd like everybody to submit questions. Um, you can submit questions in the comments below on the YouTube page or in uh, the thread for this video in Gamers Bay. And I'll be compiling all the best from the original Q&A post in Gamers Bay that I made uh, a few weeks ago. And this one. I will compile together the 10 best questions and answer them here on the show on Q&A with Mike. Now, um, I'm not an expert in everything. You know, I'm, I've been a computer technician for more than 10 years. I know my way around PCs. I have been repairing computers since the era of Windows 95. I've been using computers since the era of the Commodore 64. I've been in video games since the Atari 2600. Uh, I have been an otaku since the 80s. Um, well, more a die-hard uh, anime fan since the 2000s. I, I liked anime before that in the 80s. And I'm just a geek. So if you have tech gaming, um, geek culture questions, submit them. The 10 best will go into the episode and then I will start taking questions for the next episode that will be in May. So I'll do this once a month and be answering your questions here on the show. There will be a contest at some point. Um, I don't make any money off these shows. I don't monetize them. I don't trust um, Google and YouTube enough right now for that. There is a big problem with copyright and content ID abuse on YouTube. It is way out of control. They, Google and YouTube have to put a leash on it before I will even consider monetizing these videos before I will even consider putting them at risk like that. Um, if there's enough of an interest for me to do so, I will set up a Patreon because I could use the extra funding to you know, get better equipment for, uh, for making the videos to, I've got a 
great mic here. This is a um, this is a Blue Yeti to get better software such as Go Animate or um, Nomal, um, Nomals. Um, art style is very similar to Plotagon. Much more similar to Plotagon, so I'd rather use that. Maybe even bring on some people later to do um, voice acting. But that's for the future. I want... I'm not doing this because I have to. I'm doing it because I want to. I am basically following my excitement. I am doing this for myself. And if other people like it, you know, all the better. So, I'm Mike. This has been an April Fool's special. Hope you like it. And see you next time.